All right, we have sound, we have charts. Uh, let's get started, guys. We are uh, doing an um, analysis on uh, pound dollar and pound yen. I'm going to start with uh, team charts. <clears throat> I'm going to do an analysis um, mainly on the on the level, uh, trend lines, and um, wave formation. Okay, on uh, starting with a weekly chart and down to um, the 15 minutes. <clears throat> we'll try to see if there are any setups for today and any midterm uh, setup, and we'll do the same also for uh, pound dollar. Let's start with um, sorry for, for pound yen. Let's start with a uh, pound dollar on the weekly chart. Let's draw the basic line. All right. Now this will be the large trend line on the weekly. Um, the one that I was actually I am still watching this week. Uh, we tested it um, up at 160. Amazingly, for me at least, we had a 160 test without price fighting above about 20, 30 pips. I was looking forward to a short uh, pound dollar anywhere from 160, 20 to 160, um, 45, but it never gave me that chance. Okay. Uh, because basically it's what happens at uh, these uh, round numbers. Most of the time we get right just fighting through, just taking um, some traders out at that level and uh, then price third level into uh, support um, or resistance, in our case resistance. Uh, it didn't happen this time. Okay, we have uh, 60 or 70 as previous resistance. I'll just mark these levels. Um, the large levels on the chart. We had immediate support around 150, and lower. Actually, we had resistance on the uh, pound dollar even at the current price around 159. Okay. Uh, I'm not mistaken, it's a bit lower than that. I'm just going to use this uh, high at 58.82. All right, using the precise level. Now what happens with this resistance right now, it looks like uh, it's going to be broken, but we still have two trading days. And uh, my guess is we are going to see a close below 158.80 at the end of the week. In any case, there is clearly uh, some rejection in this area. There was some last week and so far uh, the bears seem um, to be doing uh, pretty well in keeping price at these levels. Actually, let me see if we do not have an area of resistance, not really only one level. The previous support, uh, I don't think it's relevant though. We already have 58.82. Um, uh, there's no point in having another resistance point only 30 hits away. Uh, from the standpoint of that weekly chart. So we're just going to see if price gets rejected here. Basically, it's previous support, okay, that then became support again and resistance in the current um, over the last two, uh, two months. All right, let's move to the daily chart. <laughs> All right, now wave-wise, I don't think we have a complete uh, formation just yet, okay? I was actually looking for another one, two, three, four, five. That could mean that we are possibly looking for another attempt higher up. Well, it's possible. Let's just say it's possible. But we do have resistance. And I just want to point out one element here. For me, quite relevant and important. Fibonacci level at 78% at 159.60. That's precisely where we had where we had the first rejection. That's precisely where we had the second one. Okay, have an easy star formation here. Um, it really looks like price attempted. Okay, at 160, it was a previous. Um, resistance and failed. I think we also had a higher high. 59.91 was the previous highest point, and now we have a high at 160. So we actually broke the previous 
resistance by just a few bits. But it is basically this way. It's bigger than the previous one. Okay, I'll, I'll try doing that. No problem. All right. So let's see what what do we have right now? Okay, we have resistance at this Fibonacci level. I'm going to mark it on the daily chart. This is probably one of the most important levels, um, horizontal levels at this time, and the one that strongly indicates short. Um, even at this point, I'm going to see if we have indications of a complete one, two, three, four, five formation. I think there might be, but I'm just not seeing it too well here on the daily chart. Probably on the four hour, it will be uh, easier to uh, to count because this move here might be our way through. Then we have three, four, five, and that would mean the formation is complete. Okay. Quickly, we are going to draw the trend lines. For the current formation, we have this for the current wave, and we have the bigger trend line right here, which is the weekly support trend line. All right, now from a long term perspective, we need more than just this resistance with a double top with candlesticks pointing down and the 78 fib to tell us that we're going down, okay? It is, though, an important uh, point. I mean, if you guys have long-term long, I would suggest to take this seriously and take some profits or even get out of uh, long positions. If not, I mean, not necessarily um, all these elements don't necessarily mean shorts immediately, but uh, they do um, suggest that in case you are already long on this uh, pair, you might want to think about taking some profits off the table because it looks like we have a resistance in place. This information, actually, this this um, let's say these elements are not restricted to pound dollar only. You are you will see on pound yen uh, that we have even a better um, scenario for a short there. Uh, I'm talking about the retracement formation. The trend in uh, on the yen pairs is uh, quite uh, strongly bullish uh, long term, but we have, I think, all the elements in place for a uh, pretty large uh, retracement on uh, basically on all the yen pairs that, uh, in general, have been moving um, together lately. Just one moment. ABC retracement is now complete. Next move to the downside. Yeah, that's what I have in mind too. Um, let me just zoom out. Because if we, this is our ABC retracement, and it is actually qualified as an ABC retracement, even though, of course, being a retracement formation, it's not a perfect formation, but clearly we are in a series of lower lows and lower highs that was not broken with this formation. Okay, that's number one. Number two, double top, um, clear double top resistance, which now is about to be confirmed at a key Fibonacci level of 78%. Okay, that would mean, uh, well, if indeed we have a top in place here, this would be the probably the best place for mid-term, long-term shorts with relatively low risk because we're talking about 100 pips. Well, 100 pips is nothing compared to the move that we are expecting of uh, maybe seven, 800 pips or more. Okay. So I'm talking just for those of you who are long-term traders and uh, just set trades and forget about them. This might be a, a, an area or a situation you want to check out and possibly uh, use for an aggressive entry. Okay, it's not a confirmed entry. For me, confirmation comes after a break of trend line and break of horizontal support. So that would be only around 156. Okay, but well. Why not take advantage of the market moving even before that, right? So let's move forward to the four hour chart. See what we have here. Okay. Now it's quite interesting. Um, the fact that we basically we seem to be to have tested, sorry, another trend line. I'm just going to use a different color, but I'm going to remove it after I, um, I'm done with this time frame. I don't want to complicate charts too much. 
Now, this was the trend line on pound dollar on the four hour that seems to have been broken. Now, it's been retested, okay? And now it looks like pound a dollar is starting to move down again. It looks to me like a typical first move out of an impulsive wave. Why that? Because basically you will see later on that the price action on this move was quite strong. We're looking at strong candles, not much of a retracement, basically no retracement from the top all the way down. Okay. And look at the candles from the retracement, just the last four candles. If you look at the white candles, you will notice they are very small while the, the black candles is very strong. Okay. Wave five in that degree, which one, uh, Dan? Um, yeah, if you look actually at the last, uh, the last move up, and now it seems, I think, um, much clearer, uh, what we're looking at. Let me know, Dan, if you agree to this uh, wave count. Wasn't so uh, obvious on the daily chart, though. Okay, I'm looking at, um, oh, okay, I think uh, it's a larger chart you're looking at. This is actually the one, two, three, four, five that I see on the last formation. Okay, it's uh, the fib uh, level fit pretty well. Uh, this would be, uh, I think, a 61.8 retracement. This would be something like a 50%, if I'm not mistaken, so they all fit. And basically, even here, if you look, one, two, large retracement wave two. Oh, let's just uh, plot these um, waves two because I think it's relevant for the case that we're trying to build. We're going to try to argue in favor of um, different of a different um, scenario as well. I just moved on the hourly chart. Okay, now this would be just for reference. You see that even on the last formation we have all the waves in place. This would be an ABC correction. You can actually see the three waves going down. Look at the wave three, very, very strong price action, the very long, um, white candles, some minor retracement wave four, and finally, another fresh high, but without continuation, which actually shows that we are looking at a possible top. It's not clear until it breaks, uh, this support, but I think it's pretty clear starting now. Okay. I'll just remove these, um, Wait for now because I think uh, we're complicating the chart too much. And I think it's time to focus on the current, on the current um, waves instead. Now this will be the first. It's a descent towards the big trend line on the daily. Okay. As you can see, not much of a retracement. So price action is quite strong. Typical, I think, for impulsive uh, movement. This is an ABC corrective pattern. Okay. You can see that the move up is finding a lot of resistance, a lot of uh, opposition. I'm expecting wave three to be quite strong. Going back on the four hour chart. I'm expecting wave three to go um, down to uh, even below 157. Okay. It's usually the strongest, longest wave in a formation. And I think we have all the elements in place. Now there are two setups I'm using for uh, trading the wave two and wave three. One would be shorting around the 61.8 to 78% of wave one. Now this would be one. Okay, let me just uh, label them to make things clear. And this would be two. Now there are two ways I'm uh, trading these um, formations. Um, Current candle is wave five. Current candle is wave five. Hmm. On what time frame uh, are you seeing that formation there? Pretty difficult for me to get um, what you're looking at. Maybe you're right. It's just that I don't see um, on this chart, wave five. Current candle, still on wave five. Oh, so you mean 
that we're actually going up for a fresh high. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, oh, I, I, we're going down. How is it? Is this a wave five in development or wave five has already been completed? Actually, on my count, um, but I'm not yet sure because it's not been confirmed. I think we're looking at a wave three. Progress to the downside. Is the wave a wave five bullish or bearish? Actually, then I think I'm I'm just going to continue. And um, while you're bearish, okay. No, I'm I'm not getting. Uh, I, I don't think I'm getting the formation you're looking at. Never mind. It's uh, it's all right. We're just going to um, see maybe an alternative count. Okay. But in any case, let me just uh, mention how I would trade it. Uh, I haven't uh, shorted pound dollar today, but I did trade some euro dollar short. And uh, I'm still short euro dollar and euro, euro yen. Okay. Now, the point would be 61.8 is 78% of the first wave, all right? Uh, where is that? We're looking at 59.40. Now, I haven't traded it uh, today, but I'm just looking probably if I had uh, been uh, waiting for this. Yesterday's decline was, oh, I think I see. I think I see what you mean there. All right. Then I think it's looking at the waves like this one. Two, three, this is wave four, and we're looking at a wave five right now. All right, then let me just, um, let, let me just tell you why I don't think it's like that. And, but your wave count is correct. I mean, I'm looking at the chart and there's no problem with this count. But there are two things I'm actually looking at. First of all, I don't like seeing break of trend line on any wave. Okay? So if I see this, I'm already thinking, whatever this is, okay, it's over. Uh, I'm very biased for this sort of, for seeing things like that, even though sometimes uh, probably you're, you're looking now at this wave and you're saying, okay, if this guy says this wave is complete, we will probably, we, we must find the five waves inside. And if you look at it properly, I'm not going to dissect it now, but it's obvious that you cannot find five ways on this formation, okay? Your count makes sense in the sense that we have one, this is clearly a correction, this is a wave three, and now we have another correction. But whenever I see something like this, first of all, the correction right now is, I think, about four times or maybe more bigger than your wave two. That's already not the typical case. All right? For me, that's something like, it's a very strange formation when you have a wave four, five times bigger than wave for two. I'm not even sure if the guidelines allow that. But let's just assume that they do, okay? Um, I'm sort of seeing waves more like an indication of price action, meaning that this move to the upside broke Basically, the, the bearishness, the momentum of this previous move. Okay. I'm more interested in that than in the actual count. And I do not hesitate to put the end of my wave on this point, even if I cannot point to you precisely the five waves inside here. Okay. Now, from my experience with waves in Forex, you rarely find perfect formations. And if you still if you go and, and the focus, for instance, now on the 15 minute chart or five minute chart and you look at the, um, the wave inside the wave, there's always going to be one that really doesn't fit anywhere. It, it looks weird. The count doesn't, uh, look right. Um, I don't know, something that's really out of place. Okay. And in, I just learned to, to simply go past that because Forex actually, Elliot Wade himself, they were not designed for Forex, okay? And sometimes this market gives 
because of, of the different dynamics in the market now compared to the Elliott Wave when it was originally uh, formulated, I just think that we have to, to sort of adapt certain things to the actual realities of this market. So I'm not saying that we should break the rules, break the, the guidelines, because if we do that, then that's not a good wave anymore. But basically, I just retain the logic behind the wave, the reason why that theory has been formulated, okay, what exactly happened behind these moves. And I still think that's very much true for any market. But sometimes the volatility and the, the leverage in this market creates, <clears throat> creates some different dynamics. So that's why I do not hesitate to say this is wave one and this is wave two for me. Because of the trend line mainly being broken and also because the fact that wave four supposedly uh, is much, much bigger than this wave two. Besides that, this does not really fit with the typical wave two correction, which is something like maybe a 50% at least to 38.2. I don't think this move even goes to, to 38.2. It doesn't even touch 38.2. So it's, in case that count is correct, and it's still possible that you are right, by the way, it would just be, I think, an improbable, um, true, true rule of alternation, which says, guys, that when you have a small wave here, you will have a much bigger wave there. But it's just that they seem very, very different. They look like they are on different levels. Okay? Just, just an opinion. I do not pretend that this is the actual, um, right way to see things. And it's, you know, when, when you're looking at other ways, I think there are as many scenarios as there are analysts in the room. But this is just the way I see it. And when I see trend line break and basically I, I see that price has gone enough for this to be considered a wave in itself. And you can actually compare it with the one, with the bigger move quite well at this point. It's a what, a 50%, almost 61.8, okay? And it's also not very common for a wave four to be a 78% of wave three. There are a number of things actually, but I don't like the looks of it, um, never mind. Point is, where can we trade this? We know all this and we have a certain expectation. When can we trade it? Well, I think we should already be in. Um, just looking quickly to see what's happening. Okay, I think uh, the GU is starting to give a similar move uh, as the Euro. Okay. Now there are, let's say, two, two basic scenarios I'm following. Either I'm shorting aggressively at the 61.8 and that's not the case anymore because I missed it. Even if I had been in front of it and waiting for the short, I'm not sure if I had if I had taken it at this point. It just seems like um, when it started to make resistance, we were somewhere above the 50%, but probably I would have waited because of these wicks uh, to see something like what I see right now, okay? So that's number one. That scenario is already out. Now, the second scenario would be to simply short at the break of the previous low. So I'm just going to mark that. All right. A short at these levels. Okay, we're looking at the midterm short around 58.50 with a stop around 59.30. That's not bad. That's about 80 pips. Um, risk for this trade is okay uh, considering the uh, target we're going for. This will be the conservative um, setup for trading wave three. Okay. Now you see if Dan is correct on the other hand, and if this is wave five, then that could be a problem because then the retracement would go up towards 159.50 and would touch my stop. Okay. So at the end of the day, it will matter if if I follow this scenario or uh, one that would imply this is the wave five, okay? But I'm just going to, to take this as such, all right? 
there is another way actually to limit uh, the exposure on the last uh, i mean on a on a trade that's too aggressive but i don't really want to wait all the way down here to to short <clears throat> so i'm going to use a smaller time frame the beauty of these waves you can actually zoom the chart and you find them there still and they're, they're giving you the same amount of information they just keep adding this information keeps adding um up with every chart that you see let me move some of these um Fibs. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the counter of those of this wave fits the band scenario. So this will be actually a three, and we're looking at a five right now. I'm going to keep your uh, option in mind, Dan, because it's still something that is based on the rules, and it can very well be correct. Okay, trend line was broken anyway, and I'm looking to see if the previous low on the formation right before has been broken that's the case in our case so clearly we are looking at a move bigger than the immediately uh the, the move immediately before it okay now what i can do is simply allow the market to go up into a retracement whenever that retracement comes and for whatever i can get um usually it's up to about 38.2 of this move now let's see. I think we have short term support resistance points here that we can use. Like for instance this one. Yeah, previous resistance, previous support, and uh, now a breakout point, apparently. And we are looking to trade this wave three, the same way I mentioned on the four hour chart, but we're just going to try doing it on a move right inside. On the formation inside it, okay, to take advantage basically of multiple levels. Now, I do not know when the market is going to retrace, okay. If it retraces all the way down here, well, that could raise the problem of a possible wave being complete. But keep in mind that even if Dan is correct or if I am correct, both of us suggest that price should go below 158. 48, somewhere around 158, 40. So we're trying to get in somewhere in this area so we can actually be in profit with the trade no matter what, okay? It's possible, of course, that neither of us is correct, so we're just going to see a much bigger extension to the upside right now, but that's always the risk in trading. So what I'm doing right now is we simply wait. We allow this trade to go with this wave to go down for I don't need another 20 pips. I don't think it will be more than that. But we can observe when the market is pulling back. If it's pulling back to 159, that would be our aggressive entry. And you can see that actually what I was looking for was to short here on the black. You see? When two was reaching my level, my aggressive level, shorting against Against the market, actually, against the trend, the short-term trend, but with the longer-term trend, the same thing I'm trying to do here at a, at a smaller scale. Okay? If the price reaches the level, short price cannot reach anywhere above the previous high. Actually, my stop is even below that. Because I do not believe in any sort of retracement um, that goes to 78, more than 78% and then goes back. I think that if it closes beyond 78 of this way, that's it, it's over, probably going much higher. So I'm just going to have my stop um, somewhere there. So this would be my scenario for now. I'm just leaving it in the air because I do not know if price has stopped or it's going to continue some, some more. But I will be able at some point to see a retracement up, whether it's in the next hour or maybe later on <clears throat> that's not important what's important is i have to have the correction large enough to give me that entry okay whatever that is okay and then let's say either i enter here or i miss the entry it doesn't matter 
but this could be definitely the point. The aggressive entry short on the blue, going to market with blue. So I would know what wave formation gives me this. And then this would be the confirmed short later today at the break of the low, wherever that low is. Okay? Just leaving it like this in here. When I see the retracement, wherever that goes, I'm going to place the, the <clears throat> end of this wave on the low. Okay? Just give the market uh, the chance to go up, whatever it, it does that. Adjust the wave and then enter at my desired level. If market goes there, I short. If not, I just do nothing. Okay? And if it goes back down, when it goes back down, which is very likely, okay, then I short again at the confirmation. The beauty of these scenarios is that you do not really have to go in unless you have everything in place. Either you have a good trade or no trade at all. Okay? This for me is a good trade, not because of the outcome, which is unknown to me at this point. It's good because it has good risk to reward. I'm just risking this area or something more than four times. Okay? For a target more than four times the risk. I am with the main trend, okay, I'm with the black formation, and I'm with even the new red formation. It's not just confirmed, but I'm definitely with the black formation. So I'm trading, actually trying to catch a high while not being against the trend. I will be against, let's say, the, the recent price action, but not against the trend. All right? Now let's see. Back to the one hour chart, this should look something like this. I'm actually counting on strong price action. This is the way I expect the price to, the way to, to, um, go. All right. And when the blue formation ends, this black wave ends as well. And then we have retracement. Once again, on the blue, and so on. It goes on and on. Okay. We have the blue, uh, the black ending at some point, and then this would complete the first red. Okay. Now, I think we draw, we drew a full Elliott wave here on three levels. I'm talking about the red, the biggest level, the blue, uh, the black, the next, and this is the one that we actually labeled, three, four, and five. And inside wave three, the one that we're currently interested in, we identified what we have so far and where the entry would be. Now basically, price is just going down quite aggressively at this time. We can of course short, uh, we're still with the main move and I still think the price should reach 5840. So clearly for me right now, short is the only option to go. But it's just that if you look, let's just zoom in uh, as a matter of fact on the 15 minute chart, you want to to actually short when you are going aggressively, you want to enter at a point where price is retracing, okay? Not while price is going down. You want to go short when price is going up. So you would at least catch some 10, 15, 20 pips of retracement, not at a point where there could be a bottom, okay? So you do not want to, to enter at any point that's potentially a bottom or a top. All right? You want to enter at a retracement even if that retracement is not a large one. Okay? Now let's see something else. I want to look at the indicators a bit. <clears throat> we have what we call the swing failure on the MACD when price is actually, when um, the fast curve is actually going towards the slow one and then curls back and the angle is widening again. 
because it looks pretty good. So I I can't really check on those messages right now. Then that we'll uh, look at them after my session. All right. By the way, I will be looking at this level right here as a possible uh, key level support resistance for wave four when the time comes. All right, I think we have a full picture for uh, pound dollar. So the scenarios would be shorting at the first retracement more than 38.2. I have a key level also at 159. So 159 could be a short right around here. All right, and then at the breach of that low, but you need a retracement. You actually need a retracement. Wherever it goes, uh, you need it to pull back at a, for at least a, a 38.2 retracement. Okay. The second setup would be entering after the pullback is done. Okay. You enter simply at the break of the previous low. That would be the conservative setup on the blue. Finally, you can enter at the break of 158.50. Well, ideally, not if it happens right now, but if it happens after a correction of some sort. Doesn't have to be a large correction, just even a small one. But if price drops right now about 30 pips and price hits 43, I would not be happy to short because again, I might be shorting a bottom, okay, right before price goes up. I can still be right, but I do not want to go up all the way 65 to 61.2 or maybe even 78% of this way while being in a losing trade. I want to actually wait for a correction. So if price goes back, and that's the key to the setup, okay, then this entry is possible and makes this entry on the red possible too. Uh, basically, no, this is not a red entry. If we are to be precise, this is black because it's entering on the black wave. Okay? Uh, it's just that this level is a daily level. I uh, use uh, red only for daily, so I know that where this is coming from. All right, any questions re related to GU? In the meantime, I'm moving to the rainbow chart, just to have a look to see if I have anything confirming or contradicting my um, bearish scenario for GU. Let's see. We're still in a bullish four hour rainbow, but we're consolidating. So um, basically we have Clear road ahead now to 158.20, another 50 pips without actually changing the bias of this chart. Oh, one hour has just turned bearish. Very interesting. The price has contracted here. The moving average went towards each other into this resistance around um, 59.20. Very nice, actually. Very nice. And I think we're going to close definitely below. Uh, 58.90, so that means we're looking at a breakout here, <coughs> price breaking the bottom of the rainbow, the confirmation for the one-hour chart. Oh, 30 minutes looks very, very nice. It's a bear signal as we speak, but this was actually a very nice aggressive entry on GU um, shorts earlier today. All right. Looks like we get confirmed. 15 minutes chart. Now this is interesting, you see. Uh, the 15 minutes chart is showing that price is striking to the downside. Clearly, we have a bearish rainbow right now. Uh, on the other hand, it tells me that there is a correction ahead with target in the 159 area. A correction that I do not care to trade. I'm not going to go long now after uh, seeing all these uh, bearish signs and with price price action being bearish and with the overall picture being bearish. But I do, I can actually wait. I can do nothing 
not jump into my short immediately if there are enough signs that price will return towards the bundle of moving averages here because the breakout happened without the other colors to follow the red, okay? It looks like a sudden, uh, just like this one. You can see that we, we have a breach of the rainbow, but price does return, okay, towards the top of the rainbow. We're getting a very good price here, by the way, because if it, if it fails and then comes out again, that would be the second time it does that, and that would be your entry. So this is what I'm looking for on the rainbow chart. For a price to bounce towards the 58, 90, 159 area at least once. It looks like the five minutes chart, uh, the five minutes chart did something like that about, about an hour ago or maybe less. I think it's uh, towards the beginning of my session. I maybe I should have started with the five minutes chart. Uh, this was actually a signal. But never mind. Uh, in any case, I would have closed my position now for about 25 pips. And I wouldn't have let it um, in until I see a corrective uh, movement of maybe 20, 25 pips. So I think everything falls in place for that scenario. Um, finally, before uh, moving on to GJ, I just want to try to advocate for long, um, just to see what we have. Basically, we have this four hour bullish rainbow. There is a resistance ahead of us here, but since we didn't break the previous support, the wave is not finally confirmed. So we might still be into a corrective ABC. Now this is the, the alternative. Something like this. I still wouldn't go too far with the long. Um, if price is doing that, then probably the time would be for the bulls to actually buy around here because it shouldn't go anywhere below 5840. So I think it's a pretty good deal to buy at this point with a stop of 33, 35 pips, let's say going for about 70, okay? Uh, I'm simply trying to advocate here for longs. I do not support this view, and I'm not going to take it myself. But I'm just thinking, okay, we can always be wrong. So what happens if price chooses to go the other way? Well, it's only around 159.30 that I would be concerned, and I would think that probably we're going to see 59.70, okay? But before that, I would expect price to bounce from this area and not hit beyond the top of the rainbow at this point. Okay, 59.20. So longs for me would be interesting in case you guys are really set on taking longs. I'd rather take longs right now aggressively against the trend, okay? Because the risk to reward is still making some sense and it's actually in line with this ABC corrective pattern. All right. It has to go now because if it, if it continues, even if it continues higher about 20 pips, then you would be buying right against this area of resistance without such a great risk to reward because your stop will be somewhere out here and your target is really not that great. So I think several, uh, setups not so probable. Uh, setup will have to happen one after the other for a really big long to happen. Okay. I'd rather not go into a low probability entry. Okay. So final scenario, just think for those who are looking for longs at all costs, I would say long from right around here, uh, 5880 would stop at 5840, not more than 5840. Actual fact, I think even 45 should be okay because price should not touch 45. If you are a bull, you do not want to see price at 45. If you see it, most likely it's not gonna work out. So I would definitely eject uh, all uh, bullish um, positions 
hypothetical position at 45. Okay, that would give you a risk at this point about 35 to 40 pips, and you would want to go for a target of 59, 60, 59.65. No, actually 59.55, 59.60 maximum. The price should be rejected before reaching 160. Okay, and that's about it for um, GU. Let's go quickly on GJ. I don't think we have time for a uh, full analysis, unfortunately. We're going to go quickly um, on the rainbow on GJ. Now, this is what I wanted to show um, just for a moment here on the daily. This is your MACD divergence. I don't like to use this sort of uh, setup to go in immediately. I like watching if price is actually following what the MACD is saying. And that it was suggesting a short at this point, as you can see. Okay, this high was considerably higher than the previous, but the MACD was making a lower high. At the same time, price seems to be following through. Okay, we have double top, one of the best setups for the yen pairs at 133. Price spiked above 133 or a 13348 maximum. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. These waves look very nice, Dan, to me. I don't know if you are following this. Uh, a one, two, three, four, five set up to the upside. Market is very bullish in the yen pair <coughs> longer term. That's why I think that this must be the, one of the last opportunities to short. Um, the GJ and the Euro Yen for more than about 200 bits. Okay. And even this retracement would be big. Uh, we do not know where, where price is going and for how long. I can actually, um, project the target of about 300 bits from where we are now. Uh, that's about 126, 12590. Uh, I can go 400 bits. Yes. On the momentum of this retracement, remember we're retracing a move of about 1,008. So we have uh, 300 pips doesn't mean that much. Oh, really? You're expecting 116 then? Um, all right. I'm actually very bullish uh, on the yen pairs uh, long term. I'm expecting a very strong move to the upside. Yeah, <laughs> I think again we're not we're not in agreement here, but that's good. That's good because we we can actually learn um, and see a different perspective. For me, once this happens, the breakout of the previous uh, actually the, the break of the trend line on the weekly, and when I saw also that. This high was taken out. This was my, my horizontal level of confirmation. Starting at this point, for me, GJ is bullish. A uh, long term, specifically long term. However, right now I expect the retracement down to 126 as the final uh, bearish move before the yen is being hammered. I'm expecting it to to happen um, maybe within by the end of the year or even taking more than that, but I really see 150, 160 in, uh, in GJ. Mm -hmm. True, 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 true. No, then what you are saying is perfectly uh, correct. So I do not contradict um, your views. I know very well how um, w what the theory states, and I think you are correct on that. I just saw too many times um, these very simple rules working on the wave because, well, we all know if we trade wave, we have to accept at some point when we are wrong. And too many times I had to accept that I'm wrong just by by um, seeing, right after seeing the trend lines breaking. So I just figured why would I stick to this view uh, and apply the rules uh, right to the, to the letter of the book when I can adapt my trading to what the market is always telling me. And uh, since then, 
basically I have um, always been in contradiction with uh, other early traders, but I'm very happy with uh, the results of the analysis because it, it uh, clarifies things quite a lot. Mm -hmm. No divergence on MACD at low. Well, right here, there is actually a divergence here. All right, uh, I have to be very quick now. There is support 130.50. I am uh, really hoping that price will bounce here because I'm looking to short again. Uh, my shorts on GJ were actually closed yesterday. I was looking for a retracement, but I'm afraid I'm never going to get it. But GJ is moving fast now. Uh, it's back in its um, old days uh, shape. So I think we can see uh, today another 100 bits. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I'm just hoping that uh, traders will uh, react to the support and drive it at least another maybe 50 pips to the upside so I can rejoin uh, the shorts, this time for a longer term. A very good four hour indicators, uh, very favorable for shorts, especially the, the rate of change with this um, green trader here. It looks very, very nice. And now I'm just going to go on the rainbow for identifying possible entries. All right, now this was a retracement that I should have actually uh, followed, but I haven't. I was trading Euro Yen, I didn't, know, I didn't want to um, expose too much on the same, um, well, basically uh, in favor of Yen too much. All right, so one hour is clearly confirmed on the short. 30 minutes gave an entry, actually a signal today. It looks like a one, two, three, four, four, five from here then. A lot of those uh, perfect um, entries on the rainbow. But basically you have to, to enter very aggressively. Mm, that's why I'm sometimes hesitating to, to take such trades. But these are really one of the best um, risk-reward um, entry systems on the rainbow. Going in when you have 30 minutes and one hour converging with um, the resistance on the rainbow at about the same level. That's around here. Okay, well, this is really going down. That's another about 40 pips since uh, the beginning of my session. I'm um, hoping that 130 will not be hit. It's just um, that I want to be part of this short. I saw it for some time and I did uh, take a few uh, good tips on it. But I want to take uh, much more. I want to be part of the entire retrace and move uh, about another maybe two or 300 pips. So I don't want to miss uh, the the big party. Mm, right. Hard to tell. It's dropping and dropping. Yeah, the five minutes was a great entry. So as for uh, GJ, I would simply wait for a pullback to anywhere where price would be considered expensive to to sell. Something like uh, 13080. But, well, you have to see how price evolves. If there is a sudden spike, especially, sudden uh, movement around the uh, new uh, entry, that would be a very good entry, uh, possibility for a short. Or if not, analyze if price is slowly um, going up, well, maybe try entering at several levels. Maybe, let's say, 13050, 13060. 75, 130.90 with equal small position so that it would average somewhere around 138. I think that's a pretty good entry. Clearly for me, this uh, is a bearish um, situation and I'm looking more of a, at a um, midterm swing position for 127, 126. By the way, one uh, last thing. We are hitting the bottom of the rainbow on the four-hour chart. 
And that's not something that happens every day, by the way. Okay? And this was a perfect entry right at the beginning of the move on the wave two. It practically defines the bottom of wave two. Okay? Since then, price has been always above, always in a bullish wave uh, on GJ4 hours. Now, it's testing it. So this gives me the hope that we will retrace, we will bounce here. There's also horizontal support. So I'm hoping for 130.80 by the beginning of New York session. If not, if this level breaks, I'm expecting this to turn into resistance. 130.30 to be your entry point, but coming from the downside. Okay? Drop and then retrace it. All right, guys, time is up. I have to um, log off. Thank you for your uh, time today. Just uh, leaving my uh, email address for any questions. All right. Enjoy the last two trading days of the week. And I'll see you all next uh, Thursday. Thanks again for attending today.